back everyone it's time to go balls deep one piece chapter 1048 just confirmed luffy's connection to the monkey king and hindu god hanuman say what Yes, but that's not all, because this chapter also reveals the extent to Luffy's true godly devil fruit ability, which makes him even stronger than the Pirate King, Goldie Roger. Hold on, what? Honestly, Oda had already given us a hint as to why Luffy is so strong. No wonder Boa Hancock and the girls of Amazon Lily were so fascinated by Luffy. It's because they saw his true ability, the ability to stretch his power. Oh, what are you guys, what are you guys? thinking stop right there criminal scum <laughs> no for reals luffy's ability to stretch is what makes him so strong of course he has all his different gomu gomu attacks however after awakening his hito hito no mi luffy is now not only able to share his rubber stretching properties to other things but also his haki like have you wondered how the heck is luffy producing such a tremendous amount of haki yes luffy is just a 19 year old boy this shit ain't normal. Hockey is the energy of one's willpower, determination and self-belief. Where Luffy's hockey is no doubt a reflection of this and his unwavering spirit. However, the reality that Luffy is able to emit this much hockey over the course of his battle doesn't make any sense. We know that hockey depletes over time. In chapter 786, Luffy even lost all his hockey after overusing his gear fourth, where he had to wait at least 10 minutes for it to regenerate. We can't say it's plausible that his Zoran awakening boosted Luffy's overall recovery but to surpass his previous limits to the extent of his hockey overshadowing lightning itself and the skies makes us question what exactly is happening? So you guys know what we're gonna do right? Yeah we're gonna break this down. This is good because I could barely read so. Chapter 1048 continues with Luffy vs Kaido round 669. Luffy grabs Kaido with his giant fist of hockey looming on top. The size of his right hand is so big. I'm literally saying, uh, listen man, I can't even explain how big this shit is. It's big as Onigashima itself, which mind you, has multiple floors consisting of a giant castle with a whole gosh dang population of over 20,000 people. So you guys can understand how huge Luffy's fist is. But this is where things get insane because Luffy's fist isn't the only thing Thing that increased in size. I'm talking about his haki. Just look around. His haki is large as lightning. Now we already know of how Luffy with Gear 5 shares his rubber and stretching properties to living and non-living things around himself. We saw this with Kaido's body along with everything around Luffy turning into rubber to the point of even looking like some goofy ass cartoon from the 80s. However it didn't stop there as Luffy was able to affect the air in space which allowed him to to run through the sky, to even change the lightning into rubber, allowing him to hold it with his bare hands. Like lightning is pure energy. So with that in mind, the theory of Luffy also affecting his spiritual energy and stretching his hockey isn't so far fetched. The use of hockey is literally churning and materializing spiritual energy into physical power and effects. Luffy's ability to stretch this would explain how he's pushing past all limits and going head to head with Kaido who has years of experience above him and if we think about it even before his awakening Luffy was stretching out his inner spirit beyond the expectation of others like remember in Impel Down and Marineford Ivankok said Luffy's recovery wasn't normal it should have taken days for the healing hormone therapy to work yet Luffy in just hours recovered and went on to fight in the war Luffy stretched out his stamina decreased his recovery by stretching out his cells, increasing the pace of his healing. Where anime bullshit science, if you think about it, if Luffy just stretches out his lymph nodes to increase the production of white blood cells, he will be able to combat poison and infections much faster. And what do we know? So technically speaking, if we understand that Haki is connected to one's spirit and heart, if Luffy is able to stretch out his heart, activating the drums of liberation, he should be able to push out more Haki. We also know Haki and the spirit of a person is connected to the heart. This was proven in Punk Hazard in chapter 662 when Law switched the hearts of the Straw Hats. Each of the members personality and spirit switched as well. Sanji was even able to use his Haki in Nami's body. 
scene. And if you go back to chapter 1045, Luffy's awakening and Gear 5 drained him, turning his body into a prune much like an old man. The first thing he did to get back his energy was pump his heart, reactivating the drums of liberation. This means Luffy should not only be able to stretch the energy of Haki, but the production of it as well. So with everything I just said, you guys should understand how Luffy is stretching out his Haki along with stretching out the fibers of his heart, pumping it in the rhythmic manner of the drums of liberation. On the surface, we wouldn't think that Luffy's devil fruit is more than him simply stretching with his rubber properties, but the deeper we go into it, we find out this ability is more and more broken. So that obviously means the next thing we should expect from Luffy is that he can stretch time! Oh yeah. Seriously, I ain't kidding. If Luffy stretches out space, time dilation, you know what I'm saying? Let me be clear. I did not know that. I appreciate that. But I don't give a damn. Well, for reals, if Luffy ain't stretching out his hockey, then he most definitely is drinking Gamer Subs. In fact, if you guys want to increase your hockey, then why not try Gamer Subs for free? With all code ABD, the first 1000 of you will be able to pick out some free samples with free shipping, which means it's 100% free. If you guys do miss out, then don't worry, because our code will then give you 20% off your Gamer Sub. Fixed. Come on, every single one of us need a bit more hockey in our lives. How else do you guys think we're going balls deep till this day? To this day! Okay, so coming back to the chapter. <laughs> yes, I know, I'm sorry, I, I, I went on a tangent. Luffy asks his Momo to hurry and move Onigashima out of the way because he's coming down with the fist. Momo is still unsure about whether he can actually move the entire island on his own as he kinda, you know, he cheated his way into becoming a full-fledged dragon. My boy literally skipped his training arc. So Momo thinks back to his family, especially his mother Toki in her final moments with him. Her words resonates telling him that he will find a way, just like Luffy told him in chapter 1027, to figure a way out. So Momo starts to try super hard. Like I don't know what he was doing for the past 20 chapters but this time he's trying. He's trying super extra hard. Whilst Momo tries to figure his shit out, Kaido accepts Luffy's challenge head on. Whilst telling Luffy about 20 years Years ago, the hero of this nation, referring to Odin, was burnt to death. Though to replicate things, he intends to burn the current hero of Wano, so he then transforms into a red flaming drum dragon. This dragon form basically turns Kaido's body extremely hot by engulfing his entire self with fire. This heat forces Luffy's left hand to let go of Kaido, where then Kaido mocks Luffy saying yes that's okay, let go because I ain't gonna run, I'm coming straight for you. And it seems like Kaido has a plan in mind for Luffy's incoming punch. It's only a problem if the attack can reach him. So he just intends to vaporize the fist. Wait a second. Kaido is trying to be poetic and give Luffy the same death as Odin. But I think he's forgetting that Odin wasn't killed because of the fire. Snake rat Kage of the dumbasses shot him. Along with Odin's foreshadowing that Luffy will just use Ryo allowing him to not touch Kaido at all. But hey. Hey, I don't want to take away from Kaido's attack because this shit is mad. It's actually translated as Flaming Drum Dragon. Now you can actually see the big plays by Oda as this is a nod to the drums of liberation showing us the parallel between Kaido and Luffy since Kaido also at one point was a liberator. He freed King from Punk Hazard. Also let's not forget Ulti and Page 1's devotion to Kaido when she butted heads with Nami. In Kanji, Kaido's attack means Great Blazing Dragon Torch and phonetically is Kane Daiko which is a reference to the classic Rakugo tale known as the Flaming Drum. In Rakugo, drums are used to indicate a tale climax. This includes multiple sounds of drums, rolling, airy sounds, which is of course reflected with all the drums currently in Wano. Finally, symbolizing not just the end of Luffy vs Kaido and the Wano arc, but also the end of the oppression of the people of Wano. So at this point, Luffy and Kaido charges up both their attacks, with Luffy thinking back to the teachings of Ryo through Hyuguro back when he was imprisoned. Luffy, like I said before, will use Ryo to KO Kaido by shooting out his hockey like a gun without making contact. They finally clash with Luffy's attack name being labeled as Bajran Gun. With our balls deep prediction hockey, we in the past have brought up this connection of Luffy's to Hanuman who is also referred as 
the Bajrang Bali. Oda has hidden more symbolism behind this attacker's name, as Maruti, the son of Vayu, was a mischievous boy who mistook the sun as a fruit and attempted to eat it, just like how Luffy as a kid ate the sun god fruit thinking it was food. Maruti or Hanuman's dad Vayu controls wind and storms just like Luffy's dad Dragon. However, Hanuman's true caretakers or parents were Kesari and his wife Anjana. Luffy was in a familiar boat where he shares more DNA with Dragon but Luffy's true father figure was Garp. And of course, Garp shares a lot of resemblance to Kesari. Kesari was the chief of the Sugriv force and fought a monster named Sambastana, who was killing holy saints in the holy land of Gokurna. He destroyed the monster with his great fist and a wrestling match. Hmm, doesn't this sound familiar to someone we know? Hmm, I wonder who it could be. Oh, it's Garp, the fist, the hero of the marine, where he, with Roger during the God Valley incident, fought Rocks the monster who was persecuting celestial dragons. Holy shit. Bruh. The connections don't stop there, as Hanuman as a boy is even mistaken as a devil. Obviously, this relates to Luffy, considering that he has the letter D in his name, Monkey D. Luffy, who are called devils and enemies of the god. Indra, the god of the heavens in Hinduism, and with the powers of lightning similar to Enel in the sky, mistook Hanuman as a devil and attacked him, leaving a permanent mark on his face. And of course, Luffy. Luffy also has a mark on his face. After this whole misunderstanding was cleared up, Indra blessed Hanuman to make up for what he did, immunity from all sorts of weapons. The other deities also blessed the boy, giving him extreme speed, which can be seen in Luffy with Gear 2nd. Effulgence, meaning shining brightly and exerting extreme joy, which is pretty much Luffy's entire character, shining brightly to bring in many allies as stated by Mihawk and Hyogoro, he has the power to bring others to his side. Of course, the natural joy Luffy has relates to this. Another blessing was wisdom, which we talked about in this video on screen right now. Everyone called this crazy, but it's been linked back to Luffy being a wisdom king once again. He is even blessed to have no fear of death, and we saw this with Luffy recently as Kaido said that he would die. And Luffy exclaims, why do you think that would bother me? He doesn't care. If we even go back to Loke time, Luffy was happy to die at the hands of Buggy. All of these blessings are what make up Gear 5. Hanuman is even known to have immunity to all attacks. Even the most powerful weapons cannot harm him. Luffy at this point cannot be hurt by the brute force from Kaido's Kanabo, who is the strongest creature on earth. So it is pretty much confirmed that the main inspiration behind Luffy's character was Hanuman. However, we have some big predictions in mind which could reveal the true identity of Luffy's mother, his grandmother, and the whole lineage of the Monkey D family. And let me tell you, it kind of confirms that Luffy is part Celestial Dragon. So hit that notification bell and like this video. Let's get this to 30,000 likes so we can make the video about Luffy's true family origins. While all of this is happening on the rooftop, Top, we see the samurai on Onigashima's skull dome praying to sun god Luffy to take Kaido down. Even Kawamatsu states that if they don't take Kaido down now, the nightmare that the people of Wano have suffered for years won't end. We then transition into a flashback to the day Odin died. Oh crap, we haven't seen this one before. We see Kaido say he will take care of Momonosuke, Odin's heir all by himself. While the people of Wano beg Kaido and Orochi to have mercy and to stop hurting the Kozuki clan, they don't give a crap and they just start killing everyone. When the Kozuki clan line was officially said to be dead, Orochi gave the daimyos a choice. Either they will usher in the new Wano or they will wage war. The daimyos of course refused to accept a shogun that isn't a Kozuki and decided to avenge Odin. This did not go well as uh, they're fighting a freaking emperor and they got obliterated by just Kaido himself. Jumping back to the present though, where Orochi, the Kage of the dumbasses, being completely covered in flames, is cursing Komurasaki, telling her he will take her to hell with him and to not underestimate the wrath of the Korozumi clan. This is some Vegeta shit. He's the only person alive. He's like, oh my god, the wrath of the Korozumi clan. Who you got? You got one head left. <laughs> 
<laughs> However, this is when we hear a voice stating, seems like things are getting out of control here. And that's when we see that it was Denjiro as he slashes Orochi's last head, effectively killing him. Or at least I hope he is dead. God damn. This dude has already died like four times and he's been taking off half of the pages in the chapters for the last like four or five chapters. Like, dude, let us see Kaido versus Luffy. Oh my God. Die alert. Anyways, a quick thing to note is that Orochi was always meant to die while being burnt alive. As in chapter 1030, Kanjiro made a pact with Orochi to free them in a final blaze of glory. This was their final act, the suicide pact of the Kurozumi clan. What Orochi did not realize is that he was also tied to this pact, which would eventually bring him to his end. And even if he was killed by being slashed by Denjiro, he still was burning, which will technically give him the death he was meant to have. It's kind of like Odin, you know, Odin was burnt for an hour and then he didn't actually die because of the burning oil, but Orochi shot him. Similar to here, Orochi was burned by the fire, but it wasn't actually the fire which killed him. It was actually Denjiro who slashed him. This chapter is essentially about promise. Luffy's promise to the samurai's kid Law, his crew, to beat the crap out of Kaido, Momo's resolve to move the island, and now Denjiro's promise to keep Hiyori safe. Denjiro being the one to put an end to Orochi seems fitting as out of everyone, he was the one who spent 20 years alongside Orochi effectively being a lapdog who followed every order from the Kage of the dumbasses. This dude suffered so much that his literal face structure changed. So I quite like that Denjiro was the one to do the final blow. Coming to the final page of the chapter, we see the messages the people of Wano wrote on their lanterns as a wish that say, please make Orochi disappear. And another one saying, free us from this hell. As as we turn to Luffy clashing with Kaido for one last attack. We see their conquerors clashing with one another. Luffy versus Kaido is nearing its end and this final was so boring. I'm, I'm just gonna say it, all right? We have been having the same cliffhanger for the past three chapters, even though the panels kind of look the same. Luffy's charging up the final attack. Oh shit, he's about to hit it. Kaido with a lightning bolt. Oh crap, he got a big fist that's bigger than an island. And now that fist has still not landed because of the Kage of the dumbasses Orochi taking up more pages than he deserves. Honestly, I, I feel like we've said that the battle is gonna be over after this final attack for two months now. And I'm just saying, Oda needs to come up with something new. We want Luffy to punch Kaido so hard we get transported to Kaido's flashback to God Valley. All right, that's what we wanna see now. <laughs> but you know what doesn't get old? Our One Piece content. So if you guys would like to keep supporting us, then please watch our other One Piece videos. This video right here that's displayed on you this is a banger video. We talk about Roger's entire life and we also talk about how Roger was the strongest man One Piece ever. Go check that out.